All right, now that we went over the first component, in our case, the processors, let's jump to the next one. So we have the input ports and the output port. Uh, you see this, this uh, arrow with a line in front of it and then uh, this circle with a line, in, with an with a arrow in front of it. So that's an output and this is an input. The way you bring them on a canvas is by pretty much click and drag it into. Here we don't get the same amount of options as the processors because this is a single reusable component all it asks you is to give it a name so in I just call it input port now the input ports what are what are they using NiFi they act as a mechanism for transferring data into a process group when an input port is dragged on the canvas it, you're gonna get prompted with the name and they might have the input ports that's one key feature and requirement. They have to be unique in name. So if I'll do this and I'll say in port, we're going to get an error. Hey, dummy, it has to be unique. Cool. Public port must be unique. Cool. No problem. So you can see we can't do, actually do that. Um, we can disable it or we can enable it back and then we can also configure it. Uh, in the configuration, pretty straightforward. You can add comments. This is always good to comments for use case and concurrency on it. Cool. So let's move into that. Now, next, we're going to see a use case for it and explain how they work. And next, we're going to go to the output port. Same principle, same mechanism of using them. So we can say out port. Pretty straightforward. Same, same idea. Um, it must be unique, but their use case is different. So output port provides a mechanism of transferring data between process groups, uh, but outside process groups. So input, it's inside, brings data inside, and outputs, brings data outside. So now let's see a use case for this one. So let's first remove them the same the way you remove that you can click and press delete or click right and press delete. How can we use an input port and output port in our use case? On the main canvas, when you drag an input and an output port, you have to have another component called remote, remote process groups. Um, what happens, um, when you put an input port and output port on the main canvas, NiFi will consider it as a site-to-site -site, um, uh, communication, you know? So we're not going to go over that concept. That's going to be a bit... We're going to go over it in the next tutorial, in the next, in the later tutorial. But next, let's move into the process groups. And then once we're going to drag the process group on the canvas, we can see how we can use input and output ports to see a use case for it. All right, so let's drag, same principle, drag it on, you give it a name. So uh, let's call it PG, process group. This is also, you can import it from a template. We're not gonna do that right now, but we're gonna see how we can do that in the future. All right, so just say add. Here, right now, you're gonna get a box with a bunch of information. You get queues, in, read, write, out. All this information, it's, uh, it's, there are statistics based on the last five minutes. You get, um, you get transmission, transmit, transmitting remote process groups, um, not transmitting, you get running, you get stopped, you get invalid, you get disabled. So these are the same, if you think about it, the main cam canvas or the, at the process group level, pretty much they're the same as this one, but they're a bit separated here down uh if you see you go in the order you get the same until until here and then the other ones you get them down here uh you're gonna get um information about your code versioning or your flow versioning if it's version or if it's uh, modified meaning that it's ahead of your version um version flow uh is it uh is it stale you know is, is there something modified in, in stale version process group and sync failure version process group this is used when you have a schema registry attached to your instance 
By the way, we're going to make a video on how we can install schema registry on local and link it to our NIFI instance. But now let's move forward with the process group. How do I get into my process group? Click right, enter group, or double click on it. And right now, we, we you will say like, oh, it, the process group disappeared. No, actually, we are inside the process group. And the way you you actually no, you you will notice that if you see here down, we have a breadcrumb sort of a UI. We can also navigate here. If you click, we jump on the main canvas. If you double click, you can see it tells us that we are inside the process group. If you go back here, we are on the main. And now let's jump into it and show you the example of input port. So first, let's add an input port on this. So we're going to call it in again. Uh, receives from local connection. That's the setup. So you can see that the... The UI of the input port change once we have the input port inside the process group. And let's add another process group. So this is going to be an embedded process group in another process group. So let's call it in PG. And now let's see how input ports work for us. Actually, let's drag some things and say generate... generate flow file so let's generate some dummy data attach it to the input port actually no sorry my mistake the input port must go inside the new process group and once we have the process groups and the input port inside we're going to try to generate some data outside of the process group and populate inside inside it so the way we do it we say generate flow file and drag it on top of the process group now this is going to list us hey you want to link it to what input port we only have one actually let's jump inside and make a copy of this one just to demonstrate and leave it there and now try to link now it's going to give us a list of two the relationship is going to be success. We're not going to stress about it. We're not going to get the details for that. And let's run this component. So this is going to generate me. It's going to run every, I say, every second. It's going to generate me a simple flow file, empty flow file. So if we start it, you will see that we're going to get data queuing here. Every second, a new flow file is generated. And you're going to say, hey, but we just linked them. Okay, they're queuing because I haven't yet enabled none of this one. So they're currently in invalid state because they're, the input port must have an input, a connection input, and a connection towards a, a, a downstream component. So otherwise, you see, it's invalid because it has no outgoing connection. Tells you straightforward. So what we're going to do, let's say um, we're going to use this attribute this update attribute processor and we're going to link it to it now this became it, it changed state now it's in stop uh, state let's remove this one just for the sake of it and what i need to do i need to go start and now you're going to see every single thing that comes from there is no longer going to be queued here we can say do a refresh it actually sends it straight here now that's the concept of an input port. That's how you add data into a process group from an exterior, uh, let's say, data flow. Now, let's send this data. Let's say we do some update attributes, which we're not going to do in this case. Uh, and let's add an output port. Let's call it out. You can have multiple input ports and multiple output ports in the same process group, by the way. Uh, we're just going to leave it like this. And now you can see this processor changes status. It's in running state or stopped state, pretty much. Let's start it now. We didn't do anything, no logic change, no update of the attributes. We just leave them. It is like an empty pass, right? Uh, and now we have this output port that tells us, hey, it's invalid because poor has no outgoing connection. So what we need to do now, if I will do this, for example, let's copy this component, copy and paste. And then try to add this nothing we cannot hover over this one to give us something so we can add it to an internal uh inside the process group component so what's the requirement here you need to have 
another component outside that will be able to hover over the process group and drag it to the and say hey he's going to ask us what do you want to connect to this to this object or this processor so we're going to choose okay i want to choose my output port and push it there right right now you can see it stopped so we can start it and immediately the data will be here in the other output port so you can see we have a, a process generating data outside of a of a process group sending it through the intermediary help of the input port and then doing some action on it which is an update attribute which is a dummy one and we're going to send it out to another one we can also add we can jump into the next component which is our we just going to we're just going to skip remote processing we're going to it's, it's a bit extended there and i'll go to the funnel funnel uh it's pretty much think about cloning of the data so we can also drag and add a data so we have limitless connection that we can pretty much expand so we get a single data point and then right now but if you see here we have one record here 208 there since knife fights acts like a sort of a streaming um application he will not let's say do a back processing of whatever he send and then send it to the other now from the moment this connection gets created that's when he starts receiving data all right so now we have the funnel all right cool i think it's good for the second part before we jump into explaining the funnel and the rest of the components take a break get some water move those legs uh we cover up input and output ports and process groups in this one just to recap uh I think they're really vital components. Input and output ports can be tricky sometimes, and you have to be careful when you use them from the perspective perspective, uh, from the performance perspective. By the way, disclaimer, I'm not, my first language is not English, probably is my third or fourth. Uh, so if I, if I talk garbage, yeah, you, you get the point. Um, so no further ado. We're going to close this video and you guys could follow up the part number three where we talk about the rest of the components.